Hello, this is a quick video to show you how to retopologize your models really quickly using Instant Mesh. Now it's worth pointing out that there's no substitute for good topology. This is really helpful for maybe starting off your mesh retopology and then you can tidy it up from here. That's how I've done things in the past. It's very useful as well for models that aren't animated and if you need to quickly get that model finished. But good topology especially if it's a piece in your portfolio, you want good topology with good lines ready for animation, especially with characters and of course efficiency. But if you need a quick fix or you're just starting out, Instant Meshes is the one for you. So I've got my model of my warrior here. The first one is over two million faces and you can see the detail, that's the original sculpt. So I zoom right in, you can see the sort of detail there. The second one is just decimated in Blender and that's 600,000. And there's not much difference really. You can hardly see the difference between the two. And I recommend if you're taking stuff to Instant Mesh that you use a decimated model from your really high poly sculpts. It will just run that bit faster. So there's my decimated model that I'm taking across. This one is the mesh that comes from Instant Mesh. This is 160,000 and you can see the topology there. You can go higher than this. It's quite a nice quad mesh and not too much loss of detail, but you can see some difference. Like I say, you can export to a higher resolution than this. And then lastly, this one is five and a half thousand faces. And obviously you might use this for something like a low poly to bake the information from the high poly as your textures to this one. Let's go into that. I've mirrored it just to make it easier for retopology. And you could easily reduce this down further for use in a game. So the first thing we need to do is to export our model. So let's go to the decimated one, the high poly mesh that's had a decimate modifier applied to it. Like I say, I think it's best to decimate your model first. I've decimated this down to about 600,000 faces and the program Instant Mesh will run a bit faster. So file, export, and it has to be as an OBJ. Make sure you've got selection only, especially if you've got other things in your scene, and then press export. Okay, so if you go onto the website link, which is in the description, you'll see this website and some detail about the publication here. So thanks very much to these people. Now normally you just go to the clone and download thing with GitHub here, but in this case we have to go down to Microsoft Windows here, or whatever operating system you're using. So we download that, and then once you've extracted it, you'll get an Instant Meshes for Windows folder, and Instant Meshes will be inside that. And there's the application, double click on that, and here it is. Now it's fairly straightforward in some ways, and fairly complicated in others. But as a quick guide and a starter's guide, you open your mesh, find your OBJ file, and there it is. So left mouse button to rotate, wheel to wheel in and out, and right mouse button to strafe. So here's your target vertex count. It is a target, it doesn't seem to always be the case that it will reach that. So let's say we're going for a detailed character of about 30,000 faces. So because it started lower, it wants to recalculate this. So just press yes. To start with, we have to press this solve button to see what it thinks of the mesh. And you can see where it's thinking the topology ought to go, the lines of the topology, which is great because you can come to this comb button here. This is the one you'll probably use the most and you can define how exactly you want this topology to look. So you might want to follow these edges around here and around here. And you can see it's sort of warping some of the areas around here. So you might want to tidy those up. You do have to unpress the button in order to zoom around, maybe look at the back for example, and then press the comb again, and maybe in here we want to line those up a bit more, and perhaps across here we want that to be flatter, for example. And this is just a quick guide, so I'm not going to go through much more detail, but you can see how that's changing the way and makeup of your topology. You've also got these attractor points, so I'm assuming they're like poles, I haven't used those much. You'll have to experiment with those yourself. And the position fields, that seems to be a bit more, again, for hard surface modeling. It sort of pinches your lines a bit more and brings them together. You do have to press solve in the top one and in the bottom one before you can export your mesh, it seems. And it gives you a quick makeup of where things are probably going. And then you export your mesh. I haven't found much difference with these. Smoothing iterations sometimes increases the poly count, but I just go to extract mesh and there we have it. And then save. When you're saving, 
make sure you put .obj after your title. So warrior test 2obj then save. And then let's go back into Blender, file, import, obj, bring in my warrior mesh. And there it is over the top of the other one. Let's just move that to the side. Here's my new one. And it's done a pretty good job. It's pretty similar to this one here. And we are at about 35,000 faces. Now what you'll notice though, is that it's marked all our edges as sharp for some reason. So we just select all with A, control E, will bring the edge menu and clear sharp is just there. So clear sharp. And then we, when we go back in, we've got our smoothed out model. So we ought to put that there. Is that slowly reducing the poly count? So original decimated instant mesh with a high poly. That one was 160,000. This one's just over 30,000. And this one's just over 5,000. And a quick tip to reduce it further without losing too much detail, you can select your edge loops with Alt, delete, and then dissolve edges. And then you can slowly go around and get rid of some of the detail and use basic retopology techniques which I'll put a link to in the description. So that's Instant Meshes, check it out. A really quick time saver and a good one to start your retopology off.